It's your Open Source Advocate, and I'm back with another video. And today I'm going to talk about something that you guys have asked me about several times, multiple times, since I way back did a video on Pi Hole. And these days you see videos all over the place about Pi Hole. And it's really a, a great project and an awesome project. But one of the things that you guys have asked for is how to use Pi Hole with Unbound. So let me talk a little bit about Pi Hole first. Can we talk about PyHole? PyHole is really a DNS forwarder. So you set up PyHole on your network, or you can set it up on a VPS, it doesn't really matter. And what you do is you take your DNS inside of your computer, or at the router level is much easier, that's what I do. And you basically tell your router or your computer, hey, when I ask for a website, I don't want you to go out to my ISP, or I don't want you to go out to Google, or I don't want you to go out to, to OpenDNS. I want you to go to this little machine that I set up, which is my PyHole, and I want you to ask for that website. So PyHole is going to say, oh, hey, I see you wanted to go to msn.com. Let me go and ask for that information real quick from an upstream provider. Now, that could be Google. That could be OpenDNS or, or whatever. Um, it's up to you to kind of set that up as you set up PyHole. But it goes and says, hey, give me this stuff. And the, and, the, and the DNS server upstream says, okay, here you go. Here's the IP for that. And when it does, it hands you a bunch of other stuff that, that's ads, right? A bunch of ads that are being served up by other places that are also included in those pages. PyHole kind of looks at that and says, oh, hey, wait, I've got a list of all these ad places that I know about, and I don't want you to bring in those things. So it just filters those out for you, and then it says, hey, here's the main IP address of the site you asked for without all of the ad crap. So basically, you get a site without a bunch of ads, which is amazing, and it's awesome. And when you set this up at the router level on your network, it filters everything that comes through that router, which is really great. So you don't have to do that for each machine. The machines just ask for it from the router, and then you don't get ads. Now, like on an iOS device, unfortunately, Safari uses its own DNS, so it doesn't uh, it doesn't actually work that well, like on that kind of thing, which kind of sucks, honestly. Um, YouTube, like the YouTube app, also uses its own DNS. Unfortunately, we can't we can't change that, or I can't change that. But for the most part, like on your desktops, on your Android phones, on other things that will actually, uh, you know, listen to the DNS uh, site that you're supposed to use, it really works well. And it does just stop tons and tons and tons of ad traffic, which is great. And once you have it up and running, you can go check it anytime with, uh, with the IP address of that particular Pi hole. And you see you get all these statistics and you can see... All of this stuff, 95,800 and something, 10,000, 10,000, 120,000. So, I mean, this thing catches a lot of things. And you can log into PyHole. And we can make this a little bit bigger on the screen here. Um, so you can log in and you can change the password through the PyHole command line and stuff like that. Uh, but once you log in, you get even more stats and more information and more options here down the left side. And it, it's just a super powerful little piece of software. It's really, really tremendous and really great. Um, so you can see like top, you know, top uh, permitted domains. Most of my permitted domains are either my domains or Apple domains or apt domains for my Linux machines, things like that. And then here you've got block domains. So this is all the stuff where it's blocking stuff coming through. But there's some really great features inside of PyHole. And one of the things you can do is you can tell, hey, PyHole, I don't want you to use the upstream DNS that, that, that you've been using. I want you to use something different. And that's where Unbound comes into play. So Unbound is an actual DNS caching server, and what it does is it says, hey, I can actually go and cache all of those DNS entries that you want, and I can serve those back to you. So now you're not asking Google or, or OpenDNS or your ISP or anybody else for those DNS queries, because right now Google gets that, and they want to they wanna create a profile about what sites you visit. Your ISP gets that, and that's by default on your router or your modem. Your ISP has it set up so that your DNS is set to their DNS server, and whenever you ask for stuff, they see it, and they can collect that, and they can build a profile on you based on that. So it's, it's really a privacy matter uh, more than anything, but with PyHole and Unbound, you really get a great mix of things. So this is what we're going to do. So I've got PyHole set up on a Raspberry Pi. Now, you don't have to do that. You can run PyHole on a virtual machine. You can run PyHole on top of your Linux Ubuntu server. You can run PyHole in a Docker container. Completely up to you how you run it. Lots and lots of stuff out there on how to do it, but I have a video also on how to set it up on your Raspberry Pi if you're interested in doing that. It runs great. I've been using it for over a year, um, and it has no problems. The only time you have a problem is when the power goes out, which honestly, when the power goes out, you're not going to have internet service most likely anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But other than that, it just sits there and does its thing. I don't really have to mess with it. But Unbound is the thing that I'm really interested in, so I want to go grab Unbound and put it in a Docker container, 
and then set up my Pi hole to point to the unbound Docker container. And I want to show you guys how to do that too. So we're going to kind of run through this and, and make sure everything runs the way we expect. So here's a very simple Docker run command for, for unbound. And this is the MVANCE unbound uh, version. You can see it was updated two days ago from the day that I'm recording, which is July 5th of 2021. Um, so he, he does pretty regular updates and you can get the latest or you can specify what version you want, of course. Um, but I'm going to go down here. And I'm going to get this uh, command right here. Now he says, if you want to do something for like short, short-lived requests or connections, you might want to do dash dash net equals host. I don't want to do that. I don't want to use my host networking on the on the machine I'm going to run this on. So I'm going to do the full thing with the ports, and I'll show you how to how to forward these ports. Um, so I'm going to do this one. I'm just going to grab this whole command right here. I'm going to copy it, and then we're going to open up a terminal shell. Now you can do this through Portainer also if you prefer to do that. Um, in fact, let's go look. Let's just see if there's a template in Portainer for this thing. Uh, let's go open up Portainer. Then I'll open up the machine that I actually want to use it on. And we'll see. Now this is going to be the built-in uh, Portainer templates. So we'll go look at the app templates here. And we can just filter right here on bound so it's not there. Okay. Now let's do a quick Google search. And we'll say unbound DNS portainer template. Let's just see if that comes up with anything. Aren't any great matches. Let's see, as a single forwarding DNS server, an introduction to unbound DNS. Yeah, so I'm not sure why it's not a template. It looks like a fairly simple Docker thing to do. And there may be one if you just look for a different library, but it's cool. We're going to use the, the terminal to do this. It's no big deal. So we're going to use the terminal here. We'll just open it back up. So I'm going to SSH into the machine that I want to put this on. All right, so now we're SSH into this machine that we want to put this on. And first thing I like to do is I always like to just do a, a, a make a directory. So mkdir unbound and then cd into unbound here. And then I like to just make a file. So I'm just going to call this docker run dot text. And I'm just going to paste in that command. I'm going to look at the command real quick and make sure everything here looks like what I want. It says restart always, which we do want. Uh, the ports, so this is the, the thing that we want to change. So when you do port mappings, it's kind of saying host port to container port. So the container port needs to be 53. That's okay. And in this case, we're mapping UDP and TCP. I don't know if you have to do each of these separately or if you could just do the port and leave these off and it would do both. But just in case, we'll do both. But on the left side is the host. So here... I know I don't want to use 53 because the host is already using it, so I'm going to use 5335. And over here, I'm going to use 5335 as well. And then we've got docker run hyphen hyphen name, which is my unbound. So I don't like that name. That's, I don't need to be my unbound. I'm just going to call it unbound. That's fine. Uh, hyphen D, which means run it as a daemon. So once the command runs, just leave it running in the background. Don't, don't stop it if I close the terminal or anything like that. And then forward port 5335 from my host to port 53 in the container on UDP and do the same thing for TCP. Then down here, if it stops, restart it. So if it, if it stops, restart it. If I reboot the server, restart it. If it crashes, restart it. So it'll try to restart this thing uh, for you if anything happens and it goes down, which is great. That means when you reboot, you don't have to remember to go in and start unbound. It'll just start for you. And then here's the image that we wanted to grab, and we wanted to grab the latest one so we have the most up-to-date stuff. So that's good. So I'm going to save this. Control-O, Enter. That saves, and then Control-X to exit. And now I can just do cat docker run.txt, and I have my command right there. So I'm just going to copy that command. I'm going to paste it right here, and I'm going to run this thing. It's going to go out and grab the image. It's going to pull it down. It's going to create a container for me. It's going to get everything set up here. There we go. It should be running. So we'll give it just a second to kind of finish up. It's probably starting, hopefully with no issues. There's our final key. So now we can do Docker PS. And I'm ha I have a lot of stuff here. So we'll have to go up and see if we find Unbound. Um, here's the names over here because it's, it's zoomed up. There's unbound right there, which means it's been up for 12 seconds. If we do Docker PS again and we scroll up and look for unbound, there it is. It's been up 
for 20 sec 26 seconds so it's staying up and running that's a good sign right so that's great so we're going to clear that out and now we need to go to our pie hole and tell it hey i want you to look at this other thing for dns queries so this is kind of going to be the the hard part i guess you'd say um, for me is that i'm changing something that i haven't changed on my network in a long time so from inside of pie hole we're just going to go down to settings and then right here, we're going to have this tab for DNS. Now, this may be an older version of Pi Hole. You might have to dig around a little bit. Um, if you update it, maybe in a slightly different place or something. But you see here, I have Open DNS set as my preferred IPv4 DNS. So I'm going to uncheck those things. But in this case, we need to use the pound sign for the port number. So I'm just going to re-enter 192.168.7.51 and then pound 5335 for the port that I set up for unbound. I'm just going to go down here. I'm going to click Save. We're just going to give it a second, and you can see it's kind of doing something there. Not a lot of on-screen info that it's doing something, but there we go. Now we've got our port set up, so that's great. Okay. So let's go and open up a new tab, and let's try Google. Well, let's don't go to Google. Let's go to something better. Let's go to hackaday.com. So here's Hackaday, that's going through my Unbound server now because it goes to Pi-hole and then it goes to Unbound. So instead of going to my ISP, instead of going to OpenDNS, it's going there. Now, realize this could be a little bit slow the first time you go and hit some of these services or servers because it is going to take a minute for it to start caching these things, but as we do that, it's going to build up and it's going to get better, which is great. Uh, let's try msn.com. These are all sites I never go to, but they tend to have lots of ads, so you'll notice there's there's ads missing now now Microsoft does like to put a lot of ads in their own stuff but there's ads that would be over here there's ads that would be at the top there's videos and things that would play so this is pretty good I like this this is great um, I'm really really pleased about the way this looks yahoo.com probably has tons of ads let's see what it looks like um, you know not not horrid I mean it's not the greatest but it's 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 livable so we've got a few things and if we go back and look at pie hole here um, if we go back and look at our dashboard it's hard to tell that the numbers are changing because they're so big, but we are now going and actually getting our data out of, you know, some of the other, basically getting our data out of Unbound and asking Unbound to bring that back to us, which is pretty awesome. I really like that. So now this is the way this is set up is I have Pi Hole running on a Raspberry Pi, and then I have Unbound running inside of my uh, Portainer instance here. So if I go look at my containers, it's really not running Portainer, but I can see it in Portainer. So right here we can see unbound and we can see that it's healthy. We could of course check the logs. We could jump into the console if we had to. But we can see the ports that it's running on and everything looks like it's running the way that we expect. So that's a good thing. I mean, this was really easy to set up. This was a very simple command. So if we go back to the terminal, I'll show you that command again. So we'll do cat uh, docker. There we go. It's this command right here, which is docker run. And I'll put this in the show notes and in the description, of course. So this is docker run hyphen hyphen name unbound hyphen D and then hyphen P. Now again, because I know that my host is using 53 already, I wanted to, to, to use a different port. So I just set up a different port and that, that forwards to 53 inside the container, which works perfectly fine. And then we've got restart always, and then we've got our, our image and latest. So we did some port forwarding and things like that. But this is a very, very simple command to run. Uh, compared to a lot of Docker run commands, this one is very, very straightforward. Now, I didn't set up any volumes to keep any data. Um, it might help to have that cached, you know, somewhere. But basically, if you go and update this thing, you're going to lose whatever it's got cached, and it'll have to recache those things. So that's really the end of using Unbound. But now we've got Pi-hole, which is what our local network points to to take us out and get get ads blocked but then pi hole points to our unbound dns server instead of out to a upstream dns server so our data is not going out to third parties to be tracked and collected which is awesome i love that these are both open source projects now one other thing i want to show you real quick is uh in in pi hole there is also local dns records so as you're setting up your different machines, now you can just set them as reserved inside of your router. You can give them names and things like that. But I like to give mine uh, local names, so like this one. And I, I set what the IP address is for it so that it always knows. So if I try to go to it by name, my, my server knows how to get to that machine by name. Uh, my my pie hole knows how to route my traffic so that if I ask for some of these things that are local, um, I can do that. Now you saw on that other screen as well, you could set up like a local domain of your own that also knows how to route that traffic. So again, Pi-hole is just a tremendous tool 
It's it's amazing what it can do and what it does for you. I really like it. And I hope you guys will get out there and give it a shot and set up Unbound with it just like I showed you right now. And you'll be much more secure without third parties trying to grab all of your browsing traffic, which I think is excellent. If you enjoyed this, like, subscribe, tell your friends about it so they can come along on the journey with us. And I'll talk to you next time. I just want to say thank you to all my patrons over at Patreon, as well as all my subscribers at YouTube. I truly appreciate your support. I love making these videos, and I hope that you get a lot out of them every month. If you'd like to support my efforts further, think about jumping over to Patreon and becoming a subscriber. I truly appreciate it. Thank you so much.